What's up, Spencer here. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to quickly walk through actually breaking down a UI for a mobile application into a series of components that you could then uh, take and actually start building the app from. So basically what we're gonna do is take a screenshot of the calendar app from iOS, break it down into components, kind of uh, guess on some different props that we would pass, just so we could kind of have that structure, that guidance to actually start writing our code. So down here, looking at the actual screenshot, I've just got it in sketch. Let's go ahead and kind of break things down. Now, this can work for a uh, high fidelity mockup, kind of like what we have here in the screenshot, or just very basic sketches. Um, you can kind of really start to use it however you want to, as long as you know kind of what direction you're going in. So to start off, what we've got here, let's just start um, putting some boxes around things. Go ahead and get rid of that, change the background color. So kind of what we've got going on here is a header component. I'll actually go ahead and get that right above this, uh, basically the week, the days of the week. And we can see we've got, actually, well, we're just gonna do this part because this is kind of gonna be standard on the platform. So we've got this header component. It's got a variety of different pieces. We'll, we'll go back to each one of these elements to break it down a little bit further. But we could go ahead, do a next one. Next one's gonna be this little like calendar area that actually specifies each one of the days. Go ahead, change that color. And then continuing to move down the list, what we've got next is this little list area. I'm just kind of breaking it down by what those big elements are on the actual interface. And then finally, we'll go ahead and move down to the final area of this uh, actual footer type thing. Okay, so we've got each one in these different colors, just being able to actually check out and see what we've got. So we've got this header, calendar, kind of a list area, and then a footer. So let's go ahead and add these in here. So we've got a header, calendar, let's call this an event list, uh, and then we've got a footer. Okay, coming back to this, um, I'm gonna do the footer, or the, rather the header up here, and then the footer, just because those are the most simple ones first, and then we'll go into the uh, next pieces here. So with the footer, or rather with the header, we've got kind of two main areas. We've got this left content area, and then we've got a right content area. So the way I'd think about this is basically just a, we'll have a prop uh, that's gonna be like a header right, and the way I'm gonna do this is capital letters, anything, any words that start with capitals are gonna be components. And then if it's lowercase, I'll actually prefix, prefix this by a prop and say uh, header right. Okay, and then we'll also have a prop of header left. So then looking in here, um, if you haven't used the calendar app, basically if you press this back on January 2019, it'll bring you to a list of all the months in the year. And then we've got these different but buttons on the right to do action. So basically these are all different button areas. So we know that this header right and header left, actually I need to do these the way that'll make sense to me. So we've got a header left, header right, and these are each going to take a series of children which are going to be uh, buttons. Okay, and then from there you could actually go about implementing these buttons however you want to, those would be buttons. Okay, and with that in mind, again, we can kind of do the same thing down here. Uh, so instead of having props like we do with a header where we're specifying a header left, header right, like we do here, it seems like these buttons are just all going to be spaced out uh, to take up as much space as possible. So in the case of the footer, we could actually do uh, the prop is going to be children, which is just the children prop uh, that is basically built into JSX. So we don't have to do anything special there other than just pass uh, buttons into there, just like we did above. So those are basic cases. Um, now we can go ahead and let's do the, let's go ahead and do this calendar. So if we look at the calendar, uh, we know there's going to be a start date and an end date. Each month starts and ends at a certain period of time. So we'll go ahead and add those props in here. Okay, so we've got the start date, end date in there. And then we also see, basically it's going to be rendering this series of uh, 
basically the day of the week. That's just going to be something built into this component. Looking at props though, what we're going to do inside of it, uh, basically for each one of the days with, between the start date and the end date, we're going to have what I'm going to call a calendar item. So basically this is going to be something internal to the app, um, but we're going to have, I think, a separate item in here. Uh, that's going to be or a separate component inside of the calendar that's going to render each one of these calendar items. So one will be a calendar item, two will be a calendar item, three will be a calendar item. And then these are going to take a prop on them. So basically if there's a dot on the bottom, it means there's some event on the schedule there. So we can go ahead and add that prop to our calendar item, which is going to be, let's say has event, which brings another thing in here. Um, we would need to pass a get have a way to get from the calendar to the calendar items any event. So we're going to add another prop in here, and we'll just say events, and maybe this is going to be an object where it'll be like a a date, and then you know whatever that information is, um, so something along those lines. So it would be like let's say 2019-01-23, and then I'll have you know, has event or so, something along these lines. I, I don't really care about the API at this point, but it would be something along those lines. Okay. Um, now, another thing we want to factor in here is these blank days. Not every day is going to start on the first Sunday and end on the last Saturday. So we need to basically have a prop um, kind of like has event. We would need to specify like is blank uh, just as like a filler date. So we can do that. We'll have a prop is blank for any filler days. And I guess we should also pass, you know, what the actual day of the month it is. So we can have a prop day of month. Um, and then that should be good. One other thing we'll want to do is actually have a on press handler because when one of these dates is pressed, we can actually go ahead and update this little, uh, list down here. So we're going to have a way that we can actually say which day that is being pressed. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll have a prop on press, but that also brings another thing up. We don't just want the day of the month. So we don't just want one, two, three, four, five. We actually want the date that it is. That way we can pass that along with the on press. So what I'm going to do is just say, day here, we'll have a prop of day, or rather let's call it date. That way we can pass that whole date uh, into the on press so we can basically pass that information wherever it needs to be. And I think that's pretty much everything we need for this calendar. Again, or rather this might be the first time I'm saying this, I'm just kind of using this as a structure, this is the way I'm thinking. I'll have little notes together like this on props that I then go and start building this actual calendar, these ca this calendar item out in something like Storybook. Uh, to actually start seeing, does this API assumption I'm making actually make sense? Okay, and then for the event list, uh, what we're going to do, so we can see we'd have a series of events that then populate this little list down here. Uh, so we actually need to, we would need to have a prop um, events, which is going to be like an array of events for that day. And then within there, uh, within this actual event list, to render these, we're going to have basically like a list item or an event item. So we'll call, we'll create a new component event item. Event item, if we look here, this all day is going to say, uh, basically does this event take up the whole day or it would give like a start time and an end time. So we could say, we could do a prop. We'll definitely have a start time and we'll have an end time. I'm also going to say we'll have a prop of is all day so that we don't have to kind of infer that uh, from the start time and end time. Or another alternative would be we could kind of keep internal state of if the start time and end time is null, then we could assume it is an all day event. So yeah, I don't know. That's a consideration. That's this would kind of be my basis and then I would go ahead and actually work. Does that make sense in practice? Um, and then we would have, yeah, so we would have our events, each event 
has a start time, end time. We'll specify if it's all day. And then we'll have a prop like a title and then prop. Uh, there can be like other information that isn't showing up. So we could also say like location to show up along with it. But I think that would pay, basically populate all of this. Um, and I think that's a good starting point for our API to actually go ahead and start building this screen. We've broken the actual mock-up into a variety of kind of higher components, and then we can break them down into what props we need, what components we need to actually go ahead and uh, fulfill the needs of that, but still kind of encapsulate the related logic together. And yeah, it's a good spot to, we've got this list, we can go ahead and now start building this out in Storybook, seeing if uh, our props and our assumptions make sense in Storybook. If they do, then we can go ahead and actually start uh, plugging those into our application with our real data and start working on it. If you enjoyed this, want to go a little bit deeper on actually building out a component library, go ahead and check out the guide I put together on reactnativeschool.com. Uh, I've got a link in the description of this video that you can check out. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found some value from this.